Yo, 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 everyone. It's 137 days of Love Expanded. And today we're gonna to talk about the difference between masculine and feminine energies. And this is something that I'm really passionate about. In fact, this little one thing is what I started my whole coaching career on about eight years ago, I believe. 10 minus three, seven, eight. Can't remember exactly. And that doesn't matter that I remember, but what does matter is this awesome knowledge about the masculine energy and the feminine energy. So to clear things up, this is not, I'm not talking about men and women. No, 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 no. I'm talking about masculine and feminine energies. So you might have heard about this before. This isn't a new revolutionary thing. It's been going around a lot lately, basically because the rise of the feminine. And this again doesn't just mean the rise of woman, it means the rise of the feminine. Hey Alina, happy birthday! I saw something on Facebook, I don't know how long ago your birthday was, but... Okay, getting sidetracked, masculine and feminine energy. So, nothing to do with gender, it has to do with the energies within ourselves. There's masculine and energy and masculine feminine energy everywhere in the world and it's what makes the world go round. It's the balance, it's the yin and the yang. It's that we need both of them. And so within ourselves, we need both of them to come out too. And so the reason I started coaching around this is because when I tapped into this myself, it changed my life completely. It changed my relationships completely because I am a very feminine woman, but I'm also very mas like my masculine energy is more developed. And so back in the day, 10 years ago when I started doing this, my masculine energy was more developed. I was more comfortable in my masculine energy than my feminine. So ways that you can tell as a woman or a man if your masculine energy is more developed is I had more male friends than female friends. I could speak to men easier than I could to women. I didn't have a lot of girlfriends. Even though I did have girlfriends, it was hard for me to open up and connect and relate to women, and it was hard for women to connect and relate to me. And the reason was is because I wasn't relating and connecting to the feminine within me. I was denying my feminine, which made me deny other women because I couldn't connect on that level because I wasn't in touch with that, right? So, also, because I was out of balance, because I'm predominantly feminine, but I'm acting in my masculine, I didn't know how to surrender and open up and let go. And sexually, this was a problem for me, but also everywhere in my life, like in relationships, because I would wanna be in the masculine role and not be in the feminine role, and then the manner that I would get, you know, that I wouldn't mix. So, let's go over some of these masculine and feminine things. What is masculine and what is feminine? So, let's just get down to the reality of it, masculine is penetrative and feminine is receptive, it's receiving. The masculine energy penetrates. That's why usually it's men who are, we see men as masculine because literally they are penetrating with their bodies and literally women are open and receptive and receiving with their bodies. But this isn't, doesn't mean that all men are predominantly masculine, not at all. It just means that that is one way. So even when we're having sex, there is a play. When a woman is on top, she's in the masculine role, and a man is more in the receptive role. Or when the woman is pleasing a man, she's more in the masculine role. So it's whoever is in engaging and penetrating. Also the energy. The presence is very masculine because presence penetrates. But women have to be present too. But the feminine is fluctuating and creative and the feminine energy goes like this and the masculine energy cuts through it all goes like this and that's why we love each other the feminine wants to be supported and held and the masculine wants to hold and support the masculine feels strong and important when he holds and supports and i'm gonna say he and she because it's easier but we all have it within ourselves right yes i noticed i've been listening to my videos i say right a lot so I'm going to eliminate that or be more aware of it. <laughs> okay, the feminine is the ideas. 
So I had a friend of mine who developed this course and he gave me, what do you call it, proprietary? Well, it was a proprietary course, but he gave me permission to teach this course to people. And it was all about the masculine and feminine. And you go through this process to see how you're showing up and what's out of balance to balance it out. You have a conversation with this denied part of us because a lot of times we'll deny this. Uh, either woman or men so I will deny parts of my masculine sometimes or I might deny parts of my feminine and men do this too and a lot of times in our society men will deny parts of their feminine because it's not acceptable or it wasn't acceptable and in fact I work with a lot of men to balance this out and not like because you want to be balanced you don't want to be equal that's not what it's about it's about it's about whatever mix you are at bringing that up so that you can be in touch with your masculine and your feminine. So for men, not denying that feminine part because the feminine is the ideas and the creativity and the masculine is the impl implementation and getting shit done, right? In fact, my friend who uh, did the course, his name is Meryl, I'll, well, I'll add him at the bottom so he can get credit for this. He was doing pretty well in his business. He would um, sell about two packages of you know, his service that he did at the time. He does credit optimization. He's just by himself. And I don't think he had anyone working for him, maybe one person. Well, he started, he's very masculine. And so he would get stuff done and he had a good income, it was fine. Well, as soon as he opened to this and the creativity and balancing it out, well, his business now is booming. I think last time I checked a few years ago, he had 20 people working for him, and he is not just getting by. He's now supporting all these people in his life, plus traveling, sharing this information, and really serving humanity because he was able to balance the two out, which is awesome. Don't we all want that? So, because really, this is what creation is about. It's about the masculine and feminine because Everything is created spiritually or in our minds first, the idea, the feminine, before it's created physically masculine into the world. So the feminine has the idea, and if I don't have the capacity and my masculine isn't strong enough to implement that and bring that out, all those ideas are going to waste. And we all know people who have, are brilliant inventors, but don't have the capacity to, to bring it out into the world and to do the things that it takes. You know. I'm more feminine, so I'm going to say the not-so-fun things. <laughs> I love thinking up ideas all day long, and I'd really love it if someone else could go implement them. When, my, when I was married, we had a very, very, very good working relationship. Like, we were very successful because we had this dynamic. I, had, I was more risky and had these ideas, and he is fucking awesome at implementation. He, like, gets shit done. So yeah, we had, we work well together, so having that team. But now I get to instead, instead of relying on him, develop this myself more and more. And it's been a process, I'm still developing it. So that's the beautiful thing about it, opening to both sides of ourselves more and more. Let's see, also, the feminine is of course emotional, where the masculine is very logical, and so we might not relate to each other sometimes, or the masculine might get very frustrated at the feminine, when, or the other way around. The feminine is sometimes frustrated at the masculine because we don't feel heard or seen or related to or understood when the masculine just wants to be like, what's the problem? How can we solve it? What do we need to do? You're talking about that again? Uh, didn't we already sort that out last week? <laughs> And the feminine's like, I just want you to listen to me. Come hear me, please. <laughs> anyway, that's my melodrama for the day. You're welcome. Okay, let's see what people are saying. Don't feminine have ideas too? Did I not understand this? Oh, yes. The feminine is the ideas. So the, when you have an idea in your mind, that is your feminine energy at work. So uh, Meryl said it like this. When you wake up, you have an idea. Do you know what? I should get out of bed and go brush my teeth. The masculine part of you then gets you out of bed and goes and brushes your teeth. And all throughout the day, this is what happens. And so the more that we're, you know, when I say balanced, I really mean mature. 
So there's the immature feminine and there's the mature feminine, the immature masculine and the mature masculine. And a lot of the qualities that the reasons we deny uh, um, either masculine or feminine is because in our heads we have the immature aspects still lingering. For instance, the feminine can be very wishy-washy. The feminine can be overly emotional. The feminine can be slutty, can be codependent. The feminine can be victim, you know? It's all these lower vibrations, things, but it's really just undeveloped. You have a great understanding of the interplay of the feminine and masculine. Thank you, Dina. Um, I should after all these years. <laughs> so the things that we don't appreciate about the feminine, it's only because we're still living in the mature place. We're operating from a teenage adolescence viewpoint instead of graduating into the mature feminine, which is, you know, instead of being wishy-washy, the feminine is pliable, it's workable, it is malleable, which is a good quality to have. Instead of it being slutty, the feminine can be very seductive. Now, I like seduction personally because seduction is a win-win. Everyone likes to be seduced and the seducer likes to be seduced. Basically, we all get something out of it instead of just being slutty. Okay, what else did I say? Oh, codependent instead of interdependent, right? And the victim, the mature feminine can be accountable. So when you're in any of those, these energies, if you're uh, vulnerable, vulnerability too is very feminine, right? So on the other side, a lot of people don't like the masculine. And especially now there's all this like toxic masculinity going around, which I don't appreciate all that much. Not that I'm a feminist, but I'm also not a man hater. <laughs> And maybe I'm both, maybe I'm just everything. Because I appreciate the masculine and I know the masculine. And yes, shit has happened in the past, but that doesn't mean we deny this part of ourselves or the part of men, right? So it's because we don't appreciate the immature aspects of the masculine because they're not that fun and we've probably been hurt by them. And if you're a male or a female, so a lot of men will deny these will deny their masculine because they don't want to be seen as the macho guy or the asshole or the prick or the anal guy or controlling or arrogant. We don't want to be that and so you deny your masculine and develop your feminine more, which is fine, but the masculine is so powerful. We have to have both. And not only that, the masculine is so fucking sexy. It doesn't matter of course, we're attracted to the opposite, so polarity. So because I'm more feminine, of course I'm attracted to the masculine. And the other way around, the more masculine you are, generally speaking, you're going to be very attracted to people who are more femin feminine inclined. And so a lot of times in relationships, this dynamic is can fix an entire relationship just by understanding the different things and then working on maturing that aspect of yourself and integrating it so that for me when I was like oh I need to surrender more and open more and be more receptive in my relationships things started working a whole lot better okay so what are the high vibrations if we talked about all the low ones for men not all of them but some of them so instead of being anal Menological, which is super helpful, especially when you're trying to start a business or work through a problem. Super, super helpful. Powerful. Told you they're sexy. Okay, I'm getting, I'm getting beside myself here. Okay, <laughs> the masculine is confident. Builders, hunters, leaders, all things that build and create in this world and can be very, very positive things, not just negative things. Masculine is strategic, motivating, independent, centered, courageous. So, and they execute. Cha -cha. Get it done. Which, super, super powerful. So, that's the masculine and feminine energies. 
And again, it's not men and women. We each have these inside of ourselves. And basically the optimized person is when I can be all of the feminine qualities, when I can have all the positive feminine, and I can also have all the masculine feminine. And of course I'll have strengths, places where it's easier for me to do it. But the more that I can integrate all of these things, so for me, I'm working on my masculine energy. Even though masculine energy is very easy for me, I still, it's easier for me to come up with ideas than to implement. So be an implementer and also not be as so emotional because I mix my emotions in with business and, and being like, no, this has nothing to do with how I feel today. This stuff just needs to get done, which is a powerful place to be because before I would get shut down by emotions and not do anything, which is a very feminine thing. So hope that was helpful. Love, love, love you and love, love, love me. Okay, before I do that, I'm just reading these comments, but some of them aren't necessarily re relevant. It's talking about my accent. Okay, yay, Alina. Okay, let's see. Uh, I'll connect with you in many ways. Okay, I'm not reading the comments. <laughs> okay. Love, love, love you and love, love, love me.